Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the center trade. The other day or yesterday, I guess, Jared Dulac of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette tossed out there that the Pittsburgh Steelers could make a trade in the NFL draft, but it won't be in the first round. It'll only be in the second round, and they'll go from 51 to however far up they need to go to go get a center, and that would be the only way that they did it if the Steelers said, hey, look, it, we didn't get our guy in the first round, so let's go get him in the second round, and we're no longer waiting. And to be totally honest, I could see that happening, and that's the only way that I see the Pittsburgh Steelers trading up in this NFL draft is if they do not select a center in the first round, but they still need a center in the second round. The Steelers, in my eyes, are getting a starting center in the NFL draft. There are no questions to it. It's going to happen. You could try to talk yourself out of it or try to talk yourself into Nate Herbig or try to talk yourself into Connor Williams or whoever. Chances are they're going to get a center in the NFL draft and he's going to be their starter and they're not going to miss out on it. Luckily, guys like Graham Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson, Cedric Van Pran, and uh, Zach Frazier are all kind of falling as we sit here right now. So you could look at it and say this is working out very well for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not ruling out that they draft a center in the first round. I mean, I put out my mock draft on Tuesday and I have Graham Barton going to pick 20 and I feel really good about Graham Barton going to pick 20. I saw yesterday from Daniel Jeremiah that uh, our Marius Mims might fall to the second round. Things are going to shake out so differently over the next two weeks that we don't know how the draft board is exactly going to look. But I'm going to tell you that Graham Barton's value is going to remain there. So is guys like Zach Frazier and Jackson Powers Johnson. But it's all going to remain right on that 20 to maybe the 15th pick in the second round area. And I think the Steelers are going to say, hey, look, at depending on who's there in the first round, I think this is how this works out. Depending on who's there in the first round, if it's a uh, corner, Terry and Arnold, Nate Wiggins, the Cooper DeGene, if it's a tackle, Mims, maybe Tyler Guyton, maybe, I don't know, uh, Troy uh, Batanu. Batanu, thank you. Um, if for, for some reason one of those top three tackles falls to Pittsburgh at 20, I could see them go in that direction. If they're sitting there and they're saying, look at our, our options are Kool-Aid McKinstry, a couple of wide receivers, or Graham Barton, they're going with Graham Barton. They're not going to wait it out. You know, there's no, there's no point in saying, hey, let's go and trade up in the second round to get the guy that was there in the first round. Why would you do that? There's nobody there in the first round that's worth the first round pick as much as this center class is. And people try to say, like, oh, there's you got to get value. I don't understand when we lost value for a center. I don't understand at what point in the offseason people stopped realizing how desperately the Pittsburgh Steelers need a center. Like, it's not like it went away. If this team had a bunch of needs, I could see it, but they don't have a bunch of needs. They don't have, they're not sitting here with like 10 needs where they're like, well, they got to draft all these positions. You can narrow it down to four, and one of them you could get anywhere in the draft. And that is cornerback, offensive tackle, center, and wide receiver. You could get a center or you could get a wide receiver anywhere in this draft and you could expect him to contribute to your offense. If the Steelers make a trade for a wide receiver, that completely erases it from their mind in the first round. A cornerback, you need a corner, but again, you could get a corner in the second round or the third round and you can feel comfortable that they're playing a backup role for the Steelers in 2024. Center and tackle are your only ones and you could fill both of those. Your team is exactly where you want it to be. If uh, if you could get a center, if you could get, I mean, people people weren't making fun of, and they were, they were criticizing Marquise Pouncey, and it took one year before everybody was like, oh, okay, yeah, never mind. This is the right move. This is the right call. If you could get a center, if you could get your center, your long-term franchise center, you get him. You don't think about when you get him. You just get him. And I could see it. If they don't get it in the first round, if there are other options. That's the only way they trade up, in my opinion, it is, and apparently in Jerry Dulac's opinion, as if they're there. And they say, hey, look, we're going on Marius Mims in the first round. I could see them going with the center in the second. How far do you think they got to trade up? You think they're going, I don't know, second round, top 10 pick? See, I, if you would have asked me this three or four weeks ago, the way that people were talking about Zach Frazier, the way that people were still talking at that point about Cedric Van Pran, the way that people were talking about Jackson Powers Johnson being a top 15 pick, Yep. in the NFL draft, then I would say, yeah, they probably got to move up into the top 10 into the very early second round to be able to get one of those top five, four guys. But every center has started to drop. And that positional value thing, 
is something that NFL GMs look at. They look at the center position. They say, well, is a center more expensive than a left tackle? Or do we want to tackle who is an expensive position to be here on a rookie deal for the next four? And then we'll go out and get a center later in the draft. And I feel like a lot of teams are going to take that approach. So I feel like if you get up into maybe the mid second round, you can definitely get one of the top three. I think as we've talked about Van Pran is dropping and dropping and dropping. And as you've talked about, I think off air, you're not a big fan anyway, Um, but you might not get a Barton, but the way that Jackson powers Johnson is dropping and the way that everybody was in love with him. And there was a chasm between him and the rest of the center class. And the fact that that's, disappeared and in fact on the other way with Graham Barton being now projected to go at 20 by a lot of people I think you can move up if you're at 20th pick 51 in the second round if you move up maybe seven spots you might be able to get one of Frazier or Powers Johnson depending on how the board falls yeah look at I agree and and I think that you could feel comfortable with either of them I think there's a dip between Barton and the rest of them I do and Jackson Powers Johnson concerns me but I think that they're all there and I think that they're all capable. And I think the Steelers would be comfortable with any of the three to say, Hey, yeah, sounds good. And now there's stuff coming out where like Jackson powers, Johnson's medicals might not be great. Maybe he's going to slide because of that. If that's the truth, I mean that I'm all for it. Like you want to wait it out. You want to get a guy that teams don't want to take a risk on for one reason or another. And you did your own medicals on him. You brought him in for a pre a pre-draft visit and you feel really good about it. Whatever. Who cares? Who cares? I look at that all the time. People, there's always these reports of, oh, this guy's got medical issues. This guy's got medical issues. Your doctors tell you exactly what's wrong with these guys. Your doctors checked them out and said, your medical staff knows exactly how long they're going to last in the NFL and exactly how long their body's going to hold up. And they're going to give you a detailed report. And if you feel confident that you just got a guy, no issues, go get a guy. That you know. And I think that helps their case. But I could see mid second round definitely depending on how quickly Barton goes. If Barton goes immediately after the Steelers, but before the end of the first round, I think you got to make a move a little bit earlier. But I think that if they all go into day two, the Steelers have a whole day to rework it. Not only just come up with a trade package, but also talk to other teams and see where they're going. Because that's the second part of this is you have a whole 24 hours to call everybody and say, Hey, look at, are, are you going to take a center? And, and teams are going to be honest. Like that's the thing is GMs are honest with each other. They're, they're obviously trying to negotiate, but they're trying to, you know, th- they're only trying to negotiate in a smart way. Omar Khan's real quick. Boom, boom, boom on the phone, off the phone. They just want to know, Hey, look at how, how far up do we have to go to go get a center? And even if that team's not going to tell them the teams around them are going to tell them the teams in their division are going to tell them they're going to have the insight to know who, who, is a threat to taking their options. And I think that that's, uh, that gives them enough time to, to, to go into round two and say, yeah, let's get a guy. Um, God, real quick, two things on what you just said, because I think we had lessons and examples from last year's draft one. Yes. The Steelers know who they need to pass to get certain players. They did it last year in the first round. They knew Broderick Jones was not making it past the new England Patriots. And you know who they traded with? the New York Jets to get them. So they knew who they needed to go to and where they needed to go to get Broderick Jones. So they have a keen understanding of where they need to go. And secondly, with the medicals, that's exactly why Darnell Washington fell last year. And who ended up picking him? The Pittsburgh Steelers, because they were confident enough in his medicals that, hey, if he falls to this point, we're going to take him anyway, because we think the upside is worth it. So the same thing could happen with a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson, where he begins to fall and then... The Steelers say, you know what? It's worth it at this point. If he makes it to 51, it's 100% worth it. But if he makes it to a certain point and they say, can we trade up to get this guy? I think they'll have that number in their head going into the draft. And I think that's why he should still be on the board. Yeah, look at I, I, I could agree. And, and again, you're going to know, you know, I think Darnell Washington, there's some iffiness there. Yeah, I think there's some real concern that his career is not going to last very long. But I think the Steelers knew exactly how long they're going to get him for. And they knew exactly what they needed to do with him. And exactly, he fell. Not every team's lo- looking to take that risk. And the Steelers might not be looking to take that risk if it's serious enough. And with a, a, a position that's probably more valuable to them like center. But if they're not, and other teams are freaking out, and they're saying, oh, well, you know what? Cedric Van Pran is healthy. We're going to go with him. The Steelers might get lucky. I agree. I agree. I think that's the way to go. 
Um, all right, there is a center question here before we dive into the rest of these questions here. Mm -hmm. We do. We have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. Uh, who do you like the most out of the centers in this draft class? I like Graham Barton. I think he's an athletic freak. I think he tested like an athletic freak. I think he's a dude that you have to look at if you're the Pittsburgh Seals. Any team with the center, he's my top center. I just think that he's going to be able to do everything. He's got versatility, which I think always helps just in case. You know, he's not the starter in year one. He could be your guy. Um, but I love, love, love Graham Barton in this draft class. And then there was another one here I saw about Zach Frazier. Yep. And the pros and cons. Yeah. We got this one from William. He says, in your point of view, what are the pros and cons of Zach Frazier being drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers? I mean, I think the pros are that this dude's a, a complete center. He could pass block. He could run block. He's an animal. He was the leader of that offensive line for West Virginia. I was a big Zach Frazier fan coming out of uh, college, even before the broken leg. And I think that you know, just hearing him say like, dude, it's whatever, you know, kind of gave me like the mountaineer, like, ah, oh, this guy just rubbed some dirt on it. He got back on the field. It's no big deal. I'm a big Zach Frazier fan. I think the pros are that he's complete and ready to start. I think the cons, I'm not totally sure what the cons are. I think, I think the biggest cons are just that he doesn't match up athletically compared to Graham Barton or Jackson Powers Johnson. That's the biggest things. And that's why he's not ahead, excuse me, of either of them is just because those two have him beat physically or athletically, and people are going to look for that. It's an evolving game. It's getting a lot faster. Guys throw the football a lot more. But you look at guys like Creed Humphrey. You look at guys like, I don't know, I almost said Jason Kelsey, but he's the wrong answer. <laughs> he's super athletic. You look at, like, Creed Humphrey is a good example. Creed Humphrey is athletic, but he's a powerhouse. That dude is going to run you over. And I think there's value there. And I think you could look at that and say that's the way – that's that centers could still make a lot of noise in the NFL and still make a major impact. I'm a big Zach Frazier guy. I don't think there's many cons. I think he just doesn't stack up athletically compared to the other two. We did have one more center question before we go back into the wide receiver questions. Cause we got a whole handful of those. Uh, Dyron's house says, why is Cedric Van Pran not the number one center? I just don't get it. Look at it, it's just everything. It's across the board. And I think Cedric Van Pran is going to get drafted and I think he's going to get an opportunity and maybe I'm wrong. But I think that athletically, he doesn't hold up to Graham Barton or Jackson Powers Johnson. He probably edges Zach Frazier. Physically, when you're just looking at strength and power, I don't think he matches up to any of them. I don't think technique wise, he matches up to any of them. I think he's really good and he comes from Georgia and he's got that edge and he played on a really good team. And I think that all helps. I think he's got all the makings of an NFL center. I just don't see anything in his game that really like flashes. Cause that's the biggest thing is you look at Graham Barton and Jackson powers Johnson, and you just see pure dominance in their tape. You just go, Holy crap. These guys, these guys are nuts. Like, I can't believe this. Zach Frazier is, is a dude who's he's gonna, he's gonna hit you. And he's going to play mean. And you could see it in his tape. Van Pran is a dude who, I mean, you just, you see his tape and you say, that's a good center. But that's it. You just say, that's a good center. There's nothing that explodes that says, this is the dude. You got to stick with the dude. I think just in a normal center class, he's much higher on the board. In this year's center class, he's fourth. And I think that's where he fits. 